Winners for animated feature film for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, coming on in this order, I hope. Bob Parachetti, Peter uh, Ramsey, Rodney Rothman, Phil Lord, and Christopher Miller. I, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to start with 43 and then go to 228 in the back. It's like an auction. Give us a minute. <laughs> 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 you, you got a 43. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, Matt Fager, home, RogerEbert.com. Extraordinary film. Uh, Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's dedication at the end got a standing ovation in <laughs> Chicago. Can you tell me about how you went about wanting to reflect the essence of their artistry and their message to the world? We, we wanted to talk about it on stage. I mean, that was, the, <laughs> that was the end, finally, that got played off. I don't know, but maybe you don't see that up here, but maybe yeah, you do. Tell what you were going to no, say. I mean, literally, we were just going to thank Stan Lee and Steve Ditko for, for um, really inspiring this whole thing, you know, and, and for, um, you know, being a, a force of, of, of believing that all of us, human beings, um, have the potential and the capacity to be heroes. I mean, that was, that was really sort of... Um, from day one, you know, um, it, Phil and Chris had put together a treatment and, and, and there was sort of a, a statement that was essentially saying um, it was a challenge to make a movie that um, challenged the audience to, to believe in themselves and to believe in their, 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 their neighbor and, and, um, and really, you know, be positive and make a difference in the world and, and possibly be a mentor or be heroic. That was, that was really it. That's from Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. So. That's what we were trying to we're say. We're going to 228 and then 281. Hi, Carlos Aguilar from Remescla. This question is for Phil or anyone else that wants to jump in. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> if there's a sequel to the movie, would you consider exploring <laughs> Miles Morales' uh, Latino side further? Maybe an adventure in Puerto Rico or something like that? <laughs> well, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We're really proud of this movie. And um, there's a lot of great ideas for another one. But obviously, uh, we're really proud that Miles is, uh, has Puerto Rican heritage. I'm a Cuban-American, um, and, uh, and they say that Cuba y Puerto Rico son de un pájaro las dos alas, so we're, we're, we're linked. So, um, you know, so obviously uh, that's something that's a really interesting dimension of the character that's been left to explore further. Going to 281 and then 176. Hello, guys, congratulations, Thank and you. I just want to know <clears throat> how much of the Filipino animators contributed to this movie? <laughs> Tons. Yeah. Tons. Yeah. Uh, we had, uh, I know back at uh, Imageworks, we had, uh, I'm gonna shout out John Butu. Remember John? Yeah, yeah. And there were a bunch of people up in Vancouver. Uh, it was a substantial contribution. There's, we had talented people from all over the world working together on this movie that kind of echoed what you see in the movie is people coming from whole different universes to get together and realize their commonalities. So, we were very proud of what our uh, Filipino animators and, and artists, uh, who were among a crew of 800 artists, gave to the film. And shout out to John Buchu. Yeah. yeah. John Buchu, woo! <laughs> we'll go to 176 and then 61. And Louis Del Carmen. Yes. Yeah. And that's Louis, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, oh, Eli hey. Glasner from CBC News. Peter, as the first black director to win the Animated Feature Award, talk to me about the responsibility of bringing an Afro-Latino character such as Miles to life? Yeah, um, it's a, a huge responsibility. Uh, this is something that's gonna be seen and taken to heart by millions of people, but everybody has to know that our whole team, I mean, the guys standing up on this stage, as well as those other hundreds of artists that I was talking about earlier, all of them deeply felt the importance of that idea and that mission, so, um, Miles had, a real, Miles had a lot of backup. He had a lot of people who really uh, loved him as a character, believed in his story, and knew how important it was gonna be to uh, you know, black kids, Latino kids, kids who just wanna be their best selves no matter who they are. So uh, everybody gave it 110%, and uh, we're very gratified that people are, um, are receiving his story in the spirit in which we put it out. We'll go to 61 and then number one. Uh, congratulations on your uh, win. I was going to ask, um, uh, what did it, I'm sorry, hold on, let me double check my notes here. Uh, what responsibility did you guys have to accurately uh, portray one of the first uh, representations of Afro-Latino superhero to audiences that are hungry for diverse representation? I mean, it's, uh, it's obviously a huge responsibility. Um, we were lucky because Brian Bendis and Sara Pacelli 
um, created a roadmap for us with the comic version of Miles that they invented. And um, they made so many important choices. They, they, they made um, Miles part of a really loving, tight family. And, and uh, they, they, they made choices that are somewhat unconventional and they were, they did a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So um, once we made the decision, like we want this movie to be about Miles and his family, the rest kind of fell into place. We'll go to one and then I do have to wrap it up with two, five, zero guess, in the back. Right in the, in the back. Hi, my name is Fabian Winter for Latin America. I believe, it, tell me if I'm wrong, Maher Ali has one of the voices for the character Uncle Earl. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So this would be a second yep. Oscar for him, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. If we have any advice for filmmakers out there, put Mahershala Ali in your movie. <laughs> it seems to work out okay. So my question is, yeah. uh, what, how animated was his acting there? What, what was his job? Oh, Tell us sure. about Sure. Huh? Yeah, well, I guess, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, broadly, we, um, we, we tried to cast, we cast all kinds of actors. Uh, we especially, you know, we had a lot of actors who'd never done voice acting before and who favored a naturalistic style of performance. And, and our animators really uh, met them and, and started to craft uh, animated performances that were based on fairly underplayed, fairly subtle vocal performances for which Mahershala Ali is a, a great example. Uh, one last story about, about him is that um, we, well, can I even say it? It is a spoiler. spoiler. It's, spoiler. <laughs> it's okay. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Well, um, just uh, he, at least tell us about the character. You know what yeah. was it about that yeah, people yeah, might, might not know. Yeah. So, so um, he had to uh, had a, had a death scene in the movie, and he um, we actually asked him to do it. We had him do it twice on two different occasions. We had him. We asked him on a third occasion, and he essentially said no. Or he, <laughs> he said um, he said. He, he basically, in a very calm, you know, well-articulated way, said that you know that for him to do that kind of scene takes a lot of effort and it takes it takes a lot out of him. And he essentially said to us, "Next time, if you still need me to do this again, I'll do it. But maybe look at your stuff because it takes a lot out of me, you know, when I do that." And and we went and we looked at the scene and we did not ask him to do it again. Uh, you know, he. He's very committed. He's a method actor. You know, he uh, he did a beautiful, beautiful performance, as did the rest of our cast, and and they're a big part of why we're standing on stage right now. And we're gonna wrap it up with 250 in the back. Um, Lepakazo Sandoval, New York Amsterdam News. Congratulations to you all, Peter. My heart is pounding in my chest for you. <laughs> this question is for all of you. What do you love about being storytellers? Uh, I mean, I'll just. Let's do a super quick one. I mean, it, it, to, to, to be a storyteller, it's really just about connecting with your audience, whether it's your little kid it, that you're putting to sleep or apparently millions of people who go see your movie. So I think it's just a real, it's validation um, of just being a human and sharing the experience of being a human. So um, it's kind of an amazing career. <laughs> yeah, but to feel like you've affected someone else's life uh, positively one way or another uh, is a really magical thing that, uh, that we don't take lightly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bob said it, you know, people have reached out to us about this movie. None of us have ever been through anything like uh, the experience of uh, after our movie came out and, and people who reach out to us and what they say, uh, what they feel. And uh, we feel very close to those people and that's, uh, that's very addictive and that's why we do, but that's why we do this. Uh, uh, because we want to feel closer to people and we want people to feel closer to each other. I, I can't really top these guys. It's, uh, if you can make a connection, that's everything. Uh, I, it's two things for me. The collaboration with other people um, in this medium, which is uh, a team sport, and it's miraculous to me that hundreds of people will collaborate just to get on an airplane, let alone to try to make a work of art together. That to me is so beautiful. And the idea of all those people putting a message in a bottle and exercising a part of their essential humanity, which is that we all know how to make art somehow, and it's amazing. And sending that out into the ocean is, uh, that to me, that's the whole bag. Thank you so much and congratulations, gentlemen. Thank you.